Okay, orchestra musicians, this is a video about getting more out of our practicing and just kind of getting our thoughts organized. Now, the first thing that you really want to determine when you sit down to practice your piece of music is, what's the issue? What are you trying to correct or improve? <clears throat> and I would encourage you to single out, at first, single out an element that you're going to just work on by itself. So, you're playing through this in class, okay, or you're working at home and you feel like it's just not getting better. Well, if you look at one item at a time, I think you'll make more progress than you will if you just play through a song, okay, and usually students play through those songs so quickly that they can't really focus <clears throat> on a particular aspect to improve. So, let's say that your, your first thing that you're looking at here, or one of the things, let's say your issue is your dynamics. Okay, you're wanting this piece to be more expressive. Okay, so you want to uh, go through the piece, okay, and the key word here for really all these aspects is just go slow, okay? Slow the thing down. What are you doing here in terms of playing the dynamics correctly? <clears throat> okay, well, it's going to involve your bow. It's going to involve the bow, uh, the speed of your bow. Okay, and then also the weight of your bow into the string to create either the crescendos or the decrescendos. <clears throat> okay, the weight's going to increase and speed's going to increase. Okay, how about the lane? Okay, the bow lane. So, what that what we're referring to there is, okay, if this is your fingerboard and here is your bridge, Okay, we've got our strings coming across there. Well, the closer that you get to the bridge, you're gonna be closer to a strong or a forte. And then over here, okay, this direction, you're gonna be closer, okay, to a piano, what I'm calling a piano bow lane. Okay, so if you just take that slow and work through that, okay, and, and really exaggerate. Now let's take a look at intonation. Okay, well there's a couple things we can do here with intonation. Uh, one of those could be just using a tuner, okay? And do a random check of yourself, play through the piece, stop on a particular finger that you're suspect, okay, that it's out of tune, or you know that it's out of tune, okay? So randomly just stop there and see what uh, sort of tendency that you have, okay? Are you have a tendency on that finger to be sharp or do you have a tendency on that finger to be flat, okay? Now, the next thing that I would look at here, okay, would be bowing, all right? Now, there's a couple things that you can do with bowing, okay? Uh, I would suggest that you take this whole thing out and that you just air bow, okay, what you're working on, okay? And just, just get that one element out there of what you're doing, okay? And, and how is it going? Just single it out. I think you'll find that it's extremely easy Okay, if you just move just your arm, okay, especially like with hooked or dotted types of rhythms, okay, and then how about just saying, all right, just saying the bone. You're going through there and you're kind of going long, long, slur two, one and a slur, just say that, okay, and get it secure. All right, <clears throat> the next, next aspect here, how about rhythm? Okay, rhythm's a big killer for students that always ask, how does it go? Well, first thing is, is, you know, I usually ask my students to sing the part. Okay, now I'm not talking, there's no words in our music for uh, violins, viola, cellos, and basses, not normally, but in, just sing your part, like, bum, 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 can you do that? Okay, the next thing would be to count it, okay, and this is involving you know, usually this sort of verbiage of like one and, two and, three and, four and, okay? That type of thing that's going on there so that you know what are the numbers, okay? How does this piece go technically with a counting system? So you've got singing and counting, and I would go back and forth with that particular uh, process, that little procedure, okay? And it always solves those issues with counting. Okay, every once in a while there's something that's a little trickier, but this, if you break this down, pretty soon 
after you sing the part, then you try to count it, write out the counting if you need to, seek some help, get some help on that if you need it. Now the next thing is, note reading. Okay, a lot of students, including myself, okay, back in the day, and, and students right now struggle with note reading mightily. Well, some teachers are real fussy about this. I'm not, okay, I'm just gonna say, look, write in, okay, either the letters, or the numbers, the finger numbers. Just write them in, okay? Just get used to doing that. And, in addition to this, when you're writing them in, okay, pick one and do the entire song. Okay, so if you're just, let's say that you're, you're working and the G string is something that's really bugging you, or the E string, or the C string, Okay, we'll, we'll get one of those notes, start at the beginning of the piece, find out what that particular note is, okay, and you've got all of your uh, notes here. So you label that, wherever it happens to be, okay, you label that, find out what that is, then go through the entire piece just looking for that one particular note. Okay, again, here's the key. Just go slow. Give yourself a chance to process it. Okay, what about tempo? Okay, well, uh, most of us are extremely in, impatient, okay? And we're just going to go through something so fast, okay, because we want it to improve, like, right now, okay? Well, if you've been a musician for very long, you understand that's not going to happen, okay? Uh, it might every once in a while, but don't plan on it. All right, so here's the key word again, okay? And I would encourage you, okay, to get a metronome. There's all kinds of free apps for metronomes. Okay, today in our world with your, on your, on your uh, phone, your tablet, your computer, get a metronome, slow this thing down, okay? I mean, get it to a crawl. Now, all right, so the next sort of idea here is what speed can you play it correctly? What speed can you play it correctly? Now, I remember my private lesson teacher saying that to me one time. She said, Pat, what speed can you play this perfectly? And I'm looking at her with that, you know, young player look like I can't play this at all. She said, if you slow this down slow enough, you can play this. Well, that wasn't really what I wanted to hear, and I didn't really understand it until I, she's, she's like, no, 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 no. Slow this thing down to a crawl. What speed can you play it? Okay. Well, slow enough, you can play anything in your folder. Okay, so I want to just encourage you. you. You bring that down to a speed that you can think through, you can think ahead, you can process the information that's coming to you. Yes, it's ridiculously slow. Okay, so you get through there. Your confidence is going to build. You're going to be excited about it. It's like, gosh, I actually did it. Okay, and then what I say is to my students, use boredom to push you on. Okay, so... As soon as you've played through this, and you don't have to think about what's coming ahead, guess what? Sounds like it's getting, becoming more secure and more uh, accurate. Okay, so then take your metronome, okay, and just go up in increments of anywhere from one, okay, to five beats per minute. Okay, now that's not very much. Inside your head, you're going to be rolling through there, doing this over and over again. It's going to be getting better. Yes, you're going to play through that. 5, 10, 15 times, okay? But at the end, it's going to be really, you're, you're going to be excited. It's going to be like, gosh, I can actually do this. My tempos went up. And you keep doing this until you get to a point where your tempo, you can't process that quite that quickly, and you start having mistakes that you can't fix. Then at that point, just hit the pause button, move to the next thing that you're going to practice, and then take your pencil in your music and notate. What are you doing? Are you counting by the uh, eighth note? Okay, are you counting by the 16th note? And then find out what's that number. Okay, well on the metronome it says 86. Take your pencil, write that in, and then on the very next day when you come back, kind of start there and see how it feels. Is it as bad as what you thought it was yesterday? And the exciting thing is, you're gonna see that, you're gonna play that 86 and it's gonna be like, that feels pretty, pretty comfortable. I'm not really making mistakes, I can, I can look ahead. And there's where you're gonna see yourself grow. It's gonna get better.